Alright, good evening guys. It's the second trading day of the week. But there's a lot of action happening in the markets. Hence this midweek stocks by request. So I'll just wait for you guys to join us uh, before we begin this midweek, almost midnight stocks by request session. So please, as usual, comment your name, where you're from, and the stocks that you want us to analyze and break down and to talk about for this session. That's one. The number two, if you're new to this, this is what I normally do know, especially for people who like to trade the markets using technical analysis. And please remember, these are not stock picks. These are things that we use to somehow analyze and trade the markets using technical analysis because the goal of this is I hope that wherever you are in the world, you can use technical analysis and that's how I normally do it. No, my, my style, my narrative is basically, I just, uh, I analyze stocks based on charts. That's why I don't need to look at hype or speculation. That's why I don't need to guess. I don't need to chase after news because everything I need to know is found in the charts. And that's how I normally do it. In the evening, I analyze. In the evening, I search the stocks that I want, if I own a stock, it's either, I just check if there's a sell signal emerging. If the sell signal is emerging, I sell. If there's no sell signal yet, guess what? I don't have to sell. That's why I was I was talking to a lot of people this morning and I kept telling them, you don't have to monitor as much as you want, eh? as much as you can. Eh? You, you place a larger preference on you analyzing and studying it and monitor it less because What's the difference maker is your ability to break down whether you will buy the stock or not, whether you will sell or not, whether you will hold or you will totally avoid it. And that's, for me, that's the whole gist of stock trading and investing that it's not about what stock you buy, but it's the logic behind why you are buying it. So there. And now we now have people who are joining us. Dandan Dan Ruiz from Leyte. I remember you, Dandan. Dan. Uh, I forgot what back you're from. No? Uh, Ian San Miguel from New York City. Hello. Uh, one of my favorite cities in the world. Uh, Piao, what's the best stock for long term today? I have a blog post no, uh, where it's also in my book, Stock Investing Made Easy, where I uh, broke down which stocks that I like as a combination. Uh, it's a mythical five of stocks. It's a combination of stocks that will work together if you want to buy and invest for the long term. So let's see, let's see, let's see how it goes from there. But the context of that is long term investing. So this one, this stocks by request, it's basically more for uh, trading, not necessarily intraday trading. Um, a lot of people would ask that also. I don't sell. I don't sell just for the sake of selling each day. Because people think that if you are trading, you have to buy in the morning, sell in the afternoon. It doesn't work that way. You buy because the technicals are indicating it. If the next day there's still no sell signal, you hold. If the next day there's still none, you hold. Until you hold, you hold, you hold, until a sell signal will start to emerge. So that's how you can possibly play it. Uh, you have Jeremy Makaraeg from asking about Tel. From where are you, Jeremy? Tonying Prado, hello. Helen Grace from uh, Saudi Arabia. Ed Corda from Tagig. Oi, Tagig. Uh, Ellen Padillo from Atram. Uh, Ellen, by the way, no, uh, Atram is a mutual fund. It's not a, it's not a specific stock. Yung advantage mo lang if you are... I, I have a video in YouTube right now with Rex Mendoza where we broke down the advantages of mutual funds. And Atram is one of them. And one of the, I guess, advantages of it is basically uh, when you do a mutual fund, you have fund managers who will buy based on objective and uh, that's the rule, that's the heart of it. No, you, you is depending on the objective of the fund. Anyways, can you please include Marie Makalintal asking, can you please include FGEN, MPI, Eagle, and Tech? Uh, Baglia Kagiwad watching from Japan. So I hope to see you there in Japan. I'll be there with Randall Chongson for Investing Insights 2019. This will It will be this April uh, 13. So that will be in the Tokyo area naman. Uh, Gio Bagante asking for TBGI or IRCB core CPG. Uh, Jalibur Mapiles from Mapiles Realty. Sobrang galing yan guys. Uh, Marie De La Rosa asking for URC. Joseph Acedra asking for IRC VUL which he bought at the support. And then Ed Corda asking for MRSGI. So let's take this one by one and let's break this down. Number one. Uh, one thing that like, I'd like to point out first is also this. 
um, Poppy's already uh, loaded, no? Uh, since it's loaded already, let's start and analyze Poppy first. Number one, Poppy, if you look at it, uh, number one, it tried to bounce from this support level, which it did. You have to remember yesterday it was already sitting at the it was already sitting at the support range. So Poppy, very very textbook. Friday, Poppy hit the support at 2.6, drop down. Then after that, yesterday bounced from the support. So whatever movement you are seeing, whatever movement you're seeing today, as validated by the way by the moving averages, whatever movement you're seeing today is pretty much based on it bouncing that support and breaking past that. Uh, 200 day moving average and I've been very very consistent these are the things that I, I like and a lot of people by the way are asking what indicators I use my my textbook uh, parameter that I use I love using support and resistance and whatever indicators that I use uh, in terms of my analysis just help somehow reinforce what I have so here's the thing uh, it broke out of 2.80 so the next thing we have to look at is this where's the stock going so the next place where Poppy could possibly go is this Next target price for Poppy will be around three pesos per uh, will be around three pesos per share. So meaning, uh, if the the buying continues, and by the way, you know I project this as the stock starting to move up in its uptrend already. You already have for those who attended our stock smart sessions, you know our lessons, three ways to spot an uptrend, and it's it's perfectly following not just an uptrend but also a reversal. So the next possible area for Poppy to go and follow through is around the three peso area already. Uh, if it breaks past the 3 peso area, next area that it could possibly break out from is around the 3.25 level. So those are the areas that you could notice if the breakout starts to continue for Poppy. Now, if it, it sorts of, it suddenly does not uh, hold the 2.8 level, it could just go back to the 2.6. So that's something you watch out for if you own the stock. Next. Uh, Thoughts Calma asking for Tel, Neary Ison Tenorio from Quezon City asking for Pen. Okay, let's let's do this. Uh, hmm. Let's do PLDT. Let's do PLDT. I I wasn't able to do this last weekend though, but let's see how this works. Number one, uh, here, boom, support. Yes. Uh, for those who know how to build your support levels, this is the support of PLDT. It hit, it hit the support last June 2018. Then, uh, at some point last December 2018, the support started to hold its ground again. But here we are. Uh, as of when's this? As of three days ago, uh, selling pressure started to mount, pile up here. As you can see, that selling pressure, the stock started to break down again. I'll say this: tell is starting to break down again. Even MACD is confirming not just a change in direction downward, but it's also confirming that the stock is pretty much bearish. And all moving averages are showing you that it's bearish as of this point in time. Let me, even if I zoom it out, now look at this. Boom! There. This is a very, 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 very massive downtrend of PLDT. And if you look at it, that's why we. That's why our goal. If you are trading the markets, your goal if you're tra trading the markets is no matter how cheap it looks, no matter how low it is, if it's in the downtrend, you stay away from it. The goal of you trading is stay away from downtrends no matter how cheap it is because something that's cheap can go even lower and lower and lower. So why am I saying this? If you own PLDT, uh, would be good to cut loss, especially if you're a quick trader because if you notice it, it's beyond the 10-year chart that I have already. So if it goes below where it is right now, it could even drop lower. Trend is down, and the range is saying that the stock is breaking down as well. Next, uh, Juan Maligayas asking for pizza. Uh, Tonying Prado, medyo mal malag. Sir, what's mal ah, malag? I don't know why. Uh, medyo malag siya. My internet connection stable naman. Mary Salinas Betines asking for ABG. She's from uh, Hong Kong naman. I'll be in Hong Kong, August. I'm, I'm excited. I'm always excited for Hong Kong. Maureen Arce Arceo, hello to you. June Mainit Hairstyle from Rome, Italy asking for STI ATN. Kat Erin asking for MRSGI. So let's do MRSGI. Uh, I mentioned this in Bloomberg last month. And I'll be in Bloomberg again tomorrow, no? so uh, you know me, especially in Bloomberg, I love talking about uh, consumption stocks because I really believe that consumption is 
still one of the greatest uh, arbitrage of our economy that you can expect larger movements because of where uh, I, I don't know you because of where uh, the consumption the consumption driven economy will bring us so now if you're a position trader and you own uh, you own MRSGI if you look at it and I'll, I'll zoom out also so you get full context of it this is its uptrend this is its major trend line and it's still moving and going in its in its trend line as well so if you are a position trader the downward move right now the downward move that happened today should not be a cause uh, for you to be alarmed why because the trend is still headed up the patience that you must exercise if you are a position trader please remember it's also above all of the moving average denoting a stronger and a bigger and larger bullish pattern so meaning if you're a position trader no need to sell yet there will be down movements like this there will be days where it's down and uh, another thing that you must sit uh, somehow be worried if there are downward movements in the market it doesn't work that way you cannot predict the downward movements of the market all you can do is follow the trend and follow the range so if you're a position trader you own our MRSGI no need to sell yet I, I repeat if you're a position trader no need to sell yet however if you are a quick trader naman, you have to remember this should it fail to hold the 3 peso level it can retrace back and go to 2.8 pesos per share. I repeat, if it if it fails to hold, look at this. So I pointed this out in previous vlogs that and previous videos that we have a resistance at three. It was amazing long last Friday or yesterday that it broke past uh, the three peso level. However, today, large red candle, it failed to break out. There was if you look at it intraday, MRSG I went above the 3.17. Uh, resistance that I pegged somewhere here. Oh, here's a 3.17 resistance. It somehow tried, it broke past that. But after breaking past that, intraday selling happened. So you have to remember, it's normal for selling like this to happen as well because people will need to take profits. Eh? People who made money, people who positioned early. And you have to remember context also from the bounce. I don't know. It's up already. <laughs> 60 plus percent eh? and that's from November just a three month holding period for a company please remember I mentioned this over and over and over and over last year they're one of the reasons why it's down it's just mainly because there's Cebu department store and supermarket cut were down but other than that this should be a company that's good day eh? so position trader the stock is still in the long term uptrend quick trader you need to consider because of its failure to hold the 3 peso level, a possible retracement to 2.78, 2.8 is pretty much in play today. But if it goes back to 3, it will attack the 3.20 level again. So progression, failure to break out of uh, 3, failure to stay above 3, could bring it to 2.8. Uh, failure to or, or a bounce back tomorrow or the next few days above 3 will will allow 3 to become the next support level or new support level and then it will push it and have a target price of 3.2 for the short term. If it breaks past 3.2, guess what? It now becomes amazing. Why? Because MRSGI suddenly has a shot to go back to the 3.5 level once again. So there. Thank you guys uh, for those who are still watching and following. I know it's already 10.30 in Asia, 11.30 in uh, Japan and around, I think, past midnight now for those following from Sydney and New Zealand. But thank you for you guys who are there. For those uh, from the Middle East, US, and Europe, maaga pa sa So that's your advantage. Uh, you have Glendon Maturan asking for Alco. Daniel Trader asking for ATN. Uh, and there's Cam. Hi sir, still curious what will happen to now. Uh, please remember, no, now is still a functioning company. It's just that it did not win the third telco. But for me, same, uh, same narrative. Eh? I don't try to guess based on what it can be. I just look at what the charts are telling me today because everything that I need to know is found in the chart. So now has revenue. It's not as big though as as compared to where Globe and PLDT is, but it's still. Uh, the move and the play for it from below 1 peso to around 19 pesos, 18, 17, 18, 19 pesos is already uh, gone because the news of the third telco player is also finished as well. Next, LJ Mishun, Ming Shun. Hi, Boss Marvin. Keep on doing the videos like this. We learn a lot more from you. More power. Thank you so much. Hi, Marvin from Makati. Is it best to buy B4 now? Let's see. This is from Joe War Kadungog. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, B Corp. Uh -huh. B Corp's Berjaya. Uh, it's a hotel in Makati City. 
So if you look at D4, uh, this is a support. This is a support. Let me just put this in. This is a support. This is another support level turn resistance. Then I'll zoom in further so you guys get a larger context on its short term. If you notice it, no, uh, the move here, the large upward move here, which happened, I don't know, uh, let me check up. It's, it was the legit support naman talaga. But as it started to bounce, you have to remember, stocks that move up quite a bit also, uh, you can't really expect it to go up forever. So fr from, from support to resistance, the stock went up 220% already. Hence, where it is right now is it's consolidating. So the way for you to trade markets that are consolidating is just really just to buy at support, sell at resistance. What I do know is uh, for B Corp, the best time to buy it is as it bounces from 2.7. Uh, that's the best time to buy it. And the next best time, the next, the, the area for it to take profits is around 3.4 pesos per share. So buy at 2.7, sell at 3.4. That's the best time to uh, to come in and trade that stock. So that will give you around a 28% upside for that stock. So there. Uh, next. Uh, Sir Marvin, do you think the index would bounce from the EMA 50? I don't use EMA. I love SMEs more than the EMA. Uh, so, I, I don't know. Uh, and again, oh, the amazing thing about Texas is it does it prevents us from guessing. It prevents us from uh, trying to speculate. Because the whole text, the whole goal of this is just basically to follow what the charts are saying. So, since you opened this up no Ian San Miguel, let's talk about the PSEI. Na rin. Uh, so, at least we have a greater context of what's happening to the market. So, there. I mentioned this even when I was in Bloomberg that uh, there's a very, 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 very strong resistance. You can backtrack my previous interview in Bloomberg Philippines where I mentioned that if the market, there's a very, very strong resistance at 8 1, that every time we try to attack go to the 8 1 level, uh, there will be some selling. And true enough, oh, look at this. It's been number one. Look. Uh, from this point, January this year, the market tried to rally. As it tried to rally somewhere here, there's been hesitation already as it hit February. Then February entered, it stayed here, but it stayed here, but then it broke this already. Break, broke this already moving average. Now it's trying to fall. Uh, what's interesting though is this. It's all also floating at the 7,800 level. So as what I mentioned, if you look at it now, uh, it failing to break out of the 8,100 level is showing, is denoting that 8.1 is a legit and a formidable resistance. And then if you look at the moving average, for those who attend their stock smart sessions, you know what it means when the 20-day moving average looks like that. But just to make it simple for those who don't know the lessons, it's sort of going sideways and consolidating. So the play here is this. As the PSEI goes to 7.8, it's supposed to 7 8 already. If it fails to hold that level, it will drop to around the 7.5 level, which is around here. Somewhere here, 7.525, uh, that could be a possible level for it to hold if that does not, uh, if that level will not somehow stabilize. But if it stabilizes, uh, it could be a buy signal, 7.8. However, just temper everything, you know, 7.8 to 8.1 is just a 4 point. 1% gain, so it may not be as attractive for a lot of people who uh, would want to come in at this very, very period of time. So, there. Uh, with Shintaro Act from Silang Cavite, what can you say about ABA? Cute Creation DLS uh, from Dubai. Uh, hello to you. Shout out to you. Jeff is Monte, tapos na MRSGI. Uh, Tots Calma, tapos na Intel. Uh, Juan Maligaya from Dubai also asking for pizza. Michael Lim from Quezon City asking for ABS Glow and Tel. That's really requesting a Tel ko. Sige, let's look at Globe naman just to add balance to now and PLDP naman. Okay? So Globe. Delikad, medyo delikadeng Globe. Why? It failed to hold this level. For those who have attended our stock smart sessions, uh, you know what this uh, this means, no? Uh, please please note that that's something very, very important for you to look at. And you also know uh, that the moving average now is bearish. Plus this one, just look at all of these red candles. These are already showing you uh, very, very bearish patterns on the stock. It was triggered by this cross down, meaning a change in direction downward. Plus it uh, dipping below the zero line crossing, meaning low. I repeat, 
globe is now bearish. And if I want to put more confirmation to this, ito, look at this. You can actually uh, try to put a trend line here. This is its last somehow rock that you have a support here. You have another support here. Then as it, that it coincided with 200 day moving average, if I zoom in, you will see that the stock started to break down already from our support na trend line and also the 200 day moving average. So where could the stock possibly go? But here's here's the narrative now. For investors that are very, very particular about dividends, this might be a good time for you to start to pick up Globe as it starts to become cheaper. You know me, I've been a big fan of Globe because of how amazing the company is and how I, I am a big fan of Gcash and how I believe tech will change the dynamics of how things are done. But anyways, uh, if it continues to go down, the next possible landing spot for the stock will be at around 1,800. If it bounces off 1.8, this is how it could possibly look like. If it bounces off 1.8, then this will be the range that the globe could possibly try to project. Then the stock will now start to move sideways now. So if it bounces off 1.8, buy at 1.8, target price is 2,160. If 1.8 does not hold, it will drop to 1,595 for the short term. So, uh, the thing about Globe, don't catch it while it's falling. Wait and see up until it consolidates. Wait and see up until it hits a certain level of support. That's where you start to come in. That's where you start uh, buying the stock. Alright. Uh, Joseph Lusong from Kingdom of Saudi Arabia asking for Meralco. Kamil Kos watching from Riyadh. Hello to you. Dami taga Saudi nyo. Noreen Opla from Davao City. What happened to video Sekhi and JFC? Uh, Palmer Salvador from Dubai. Uh, Petron, uh, is it a good time to enter? So we'll see. I'll answer that. I had I made a video though about Petron. That is the one of the reasons why it dropped. It wasn't because the fundament. It wasn't because it was something fundamentally driven. It was because it was removed from the index. So whatever price movement you're seeing from Petron, it's uh, basically movement caused about by uh, funds selling, uh, selling from them trying to rebalance and putting Bloom back in. So, so let's do JFC and let's do uh, let's do what, what stock is this? Petron as well. So let's look at JFC first. Okay, JFC. For JFC, please remember the downward movement that we are seeing here. And I'll put this here. You have this consolidatory pattern which started last January. You are seeing JFC start to consolidate because you remember and if, for those who watched the videos i created last weekend uh the market has moved up and because it has already moved up it now is consolidating in, in the highs meaning people who bought earlier on are taking profits and people who were not able to buy are still also positioning hence it's not yet dropping massively now from a tech perspective uh, you see price and momentum oscillators telling you that there's a change in direction already meaning from it going up the consolidation that we are seeing for Jollibee is legit very 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 legit however it broke the shorter moving average now now it's floating at the 310 support level why am I saying this uh, I can also put this here no this is a very very steep uptrend which got broken so one thing that you must watch out for now is the 310 support level. Why? Because if the 310 support level does not hold, Jollibee will drop to around 290 pesos per share. And it's not a matter of is there something wrong. It's just a matter of technicals, and it's normal. So if it does if it does not hold 310 today, Jollibee will drop to 290. If 290 does not hold, Jollibee will drop to 280. But here's the thing. If it bounces off 310, Jollibee will just oscillate and go to around back to 325 levels. Well, so right there. Um, there are some questions here about the events. No, damning events uh -huh. over the next few days. I'll be in Legaspi City this Friday for PNB clients. So if you're from Legaspi, be cool. Hope to see you there. Then after that, I'll be in Dubai for Investing Insights 2019 with Randall Chongson as well. And I'm talking. I'm doing the RFP sessions there in Dubai. But when I get back, I'm excited. Stock Smarts Manila, guys. Stock Smarts Manila, March 9 and 10 for technical analysis. But before that, pala, March 6 ata, Butuan for New Life Butuan. So for those of you guys from Butuan, I'm excited to be there. 
Then April, Japan Investing Insights with Randall Chongson once again. Then Singapore, this May 13, May 18. Then after that, the largest and biggest conference in the country with Randall Chongson, Rex Mendoza, Jason Law, Carl D, David Lee Chu, Danny Laurel, uh, Salve Do Plito, Investment Conference 2019 in Samsung Hall. So, uh, so it's pretty loaded with events. No? So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much excited for that as well. Um, Kat Erin, uh, MRSGI. Oh, I, I forgot Petron. Na pala. Let's talk about Petron. I got carried away by those people asking about the event. So let's look at Petron first. Uh, Petron, there. Hmm. One one good thing about Petron is this. It's na it now started three three days almost here starting to stabilize at the 6.6 .6 level then you now have a green candle one thing that you can look at is the rsi which is hmm trying starting to point up so one thing i know is this uh if it holds the 6.5 6.6 level that could be a buy signal also by around those levels and then target price will be uh the 7.5 7.5 peso level which is uh arguably uh our resistance that could be used for trading so Conditional, if it holds a 6.6 .6 level, doesn't go below that anymore. It's a buy. Just for quick trading, not for position trading, it's a buy. Not for investing. Up. You have to remember, for those who know my rules for investing, Petron does not fit my criteria of a stock that I want to buy for investing. It does not fit the criteria of a stock that I want to hold on to for a specific period of time as well. So, Petron for investing, this is not a buy signal. For Petron for position trading, it's also not a buy signal. Uh, for those who know how to trade stocks that are oversold, and, and as long as it holds below above the 6.6 .6 level, buy above 6.6, .6, target price is 7.5. This is around 13.8% uh, profit for you guys. All right. Uh, Moises Olano, what are you saying? Same, support and resistance. Support and resistance is the way to go. It's more of what I've noticed though uh, when people ask me, especially for those who have attended the sessions, when people ask me what, what do I use to sell, it's just the same. Whatever you see here in the videos is what what I used to uh, buy and sell. It's what I used to trade. Uh, it really doesn't uh, change it. Uh, that's what I've been using ever since. I guess what you need to do and what you need to practice really is uh, the execution, the implementation of this because it's easier to do it when it's uh, it's not your money. But when it's your money, that's why I always tell people, don't paper trade, don't simulate. Use your own. Use a small amount. It doesn't matter how small it is. But if you don't have skin in the game, there's no game at all. I'll repeat this. If you don't have skin in the game, there's no game at all. Put a small amount that you can practice. That if it goes to zero, you can still sleep well at night. You can still eat. It doesn't affect your family. Next. Uh, Katerin, I already talked about MRSGI. Um, Alexander Ko from Paranaque is asking for MBT. Uh, Ken De Leon is watching. Diggs, La Robis. Asking for Bloom, Frenzel at one from Baguio. Oi, I will be in Baguio. Uh, I think this March, March 22, ata, that level for PND clients as well. Uh, asking for food. It's a cold, cold evening daw. Juan Maligaya asking for pizza. Eggy Avacula asking for PXP. Gilbert asking for Set B. Enders come asking for now. Please remember, uh, uh, now, uh, Enders come is asking if there's any hope. Please, we do not invest. We do not trade based on hope. Our goal is to trade based on fundamentals and technicals, whether the numbers support it or not. So uh, that's one of the biggest things you need to get. Kellen Pulit in Tokyo area and Airport, it will, it will be in Kawasaki just beside Tokyo, Lopez, Chado. Uh, Investing Insights 2019, April 13, uh, they're in to Tokyo. Uh, let's see, let's do PXP, Sec B, and Bloom. PXP, Sec B, and Bloom. Just comment below for joining us just now. Uh, Name, where you're from, and then the stocks that you guys uh, that you want us to analyze. Okay, PXP first. By the way, PXP is not fundamentally sound. It's not really making money. The only reason why there's movement in it from time to time is the news about exploration in China. I saw China Sea and the Detroit exploration deal with China, but from a Funda standpoint, it's not really something you would like to invest for the long term. From a tech standpoint, though, this is what I know. This is my support. This is my resistance. And if there's one thing I know, right now, it's below the very, very strong support. So if I want to buy it, I may think twice first because I want it to be above the 14.3 peso level. So 
for those who want to buy it, at least wait for it to come back here because that's where the support level is. Uh, if it bounces there, possible area for it to go, I believe it will go here, which is a short-term resistance at around 15. So buy it 14.3, sell at 15.05, 15.1. It's The gain's not so attractive, no, it's just a 5% uh, gain, but nonetheless, for those who want to trade, that small range, you can uh, do it as well. Uh, if it if it does not hold no uh, this level, possible drop for it, let's zoom out. You have to remember, just keep on zooming out until you find an area for it that it could possibly be placed and drop. So, possible retracement area for this is could possibly drop to 12.45 pesos per share for the short term. Next, Bloom. I've been a fan of Bloom, especially when it started to, re to reverse. No? Alam naman ako, my style is always about reversals. Bloom is down today. Uh, red cat then which is normal we can't really spot the day-to-day -day movements of stocks no but one thing is for sure we can win and we can make money off of uptrends reversals and uh breakout so look at this this is still its movement from uh from from the downs the lows and its reversal you pretty much see it Still in an uptrend, so if you are a position trader, hold, 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 no need to sell yet. If you are a quick trader, guess what? This is the support range that I pegged at around 11.85, and guess what? Hey, it's not, it's not still below that level, so as long as that level holds, the breakout will still stand. I repeat, as long as the, that level uh, will hold, that, uh, that breakout will stand. One of the things that I'd like you to consider is also this. There's a shorter and smaller resistance at the 13 peso level. So we have to remember resistances are based on movements from the past. And the past was telling us that, hey, somewhere here, somewhere around May 2018, there was a resistance that got formed. So you have to watch out for this because also last May, as it started to hit that, that was the last draw. Eh? It started to go down already after that level. So key things to watch out for. If Bloom fails to break out of 13, it can trigger a downward movement further to around 11.75. But if it breaks out of 13, the shot that a lot of people are waiting to go back to the 14 peso level will now be pretty much in play. So let's see who's stronger. Even price and momentum oscillators, as of this point in time, is not denoting any sell signal yet. You have to remember, uh, Bloom reversed, but above and beyond it reversing, uh, there were a lot already of... Uh, there's a lot of funds flowing in because even index trackers will have to buy more of two. So exciting, exciting days, exciting days. Ah, uh, SecB, SecB by the way. Um, you can check this in marvingirmo.com. I, I made a blog about SecB that fundamentally it's a good and it's an amazing company for you to hold on to if you are a long-term investor, especially when it became so cheap. Guys, October, November last year, super attractive. Uh, SecB was super attractive if you are a long-term investor. So cheap, so cheap last October, November. Uh, why is it down today? Same thing, same reason. Here, it failed to break out from the 180 peso resistance level. And if you look at it, it's similar to most stocks that we see from Jollibee to uh, to other stocks that I've mentioned. Ayan, no? It's not breaking past the resistance of 180. And it's now consolidating in its high say. So meaning, it's now starting to consolidate with a very, very thin support and narrow range at around the 169 level. So possible movement for Sec B. Bound from 169 will bring it to 180. Failure to hold 169, uh, it will let it go down to around the 154 uh, level for the short term. So um, I'll, I could note this also that uh, here, you could start projecting a trend line. The thing about that is uh, somewhere in that area, no, that trend line got broken. The upward movement got broken. The resistance got broken. So now, what was pushing? That's why you respect long-term moving average. That's why you respect long-term resistances. Because failure to break out from those ranges will just cause stocks to move and push downward. That's why you don't have to be romantic if you're a trader. Why? Because if the sell signals will emerge, which for this one showed us that at 180 there was a resistance, you can sell, which also showed us that last week the uptrend also was broken. Now you're faced with a dilemma. If 169 will not hold, Sec B will go down to 154. If 169 will hold, Sec B will push and go to the 180 level. Are you guys having fun? Please comment below if you like this one. If you 
uh, want me doing this on a weeknight than a weekend. And if you wanted this late as well, because the thing about this, yung mga, uh, people following us from Asia, naman, uh, they won't be able to enjoy this because most of them, especially Australia, New Zealand, they'll be asleep. But for those from North America, Europe, uh, enjoy, enjoy kayo. Uh, so you'll be able to be, will be part of this. Um, JM from Tacloban is asking for DNFBI. Marvin Ixia, hello to you, Marvin, nice name. Uh, Jivlin Rafols asking for Wilcon. Martin Caps asking for Poppy. Done now, it was the first one for this video. So this will be in YouTube for those who would want to know more about it. Uh, Jeremy Makaraeg from Pangasinan asking for SCC. Tony Prado from Pasay City asking for Wilcon uh, IRC ISM. Morel Aguirre from Turks and Caicos Island. Uy, interesting yung place na is it? Ano, uh, how, are the, how are the sceneries there naman? Uh, Tyron Javier for VLL and Med. Uh, Ivan CDN, how do you encourage a millennial? Uh, let them know that they won't be able to work forever, that they need to build assets today, that hindi sila magiging malakas pang habang buhay, that yung skills nila ngayon, that when they get older, will also start to diminish the ability to work harder, will start to diminish. That's why they need to build something, build assets, that as the assets get bigger, stronger, better, that when they get older, they can rest and possibly also do what they want. It's not about not enjoying. It's about not enjoying today so that later on, you can enjoy more. But that's why I keep telling people, you have to do what you love. It. Because if you do what you love, it won't be worth it. You don't have to compensate yourself with any material thing to make you happy because your everyday is something that you're enjoying. So anyways, uh, I'm stuck. VLN, see, VLN is and then I'll probably end though in a few just after a few stocks. Because I'll be early tomorrow. I'll be in uh, Bloomberg TV Philippines, so you can watch out for that. I don't actually know yet what will uh, what will I talk about, but I hope that uh, what we discuss here is something also that gives value to you. So Visalan, indecision candle. That means we have to wait tomorrow on what the market will decide. Uh, will be its day-to-day -day movement, but from a range perspective, it's still breaking out. Meaning, if you are a range trader, you are a quick trader, you sell signal yet. Even our short-term moving averages on the short-term uh, price and momentum oscillators are not showing yet a sell signal for Vista Land. Uh, for position traders, of course, bull. it's still bullish. The, the ability for you to make more at this point in time is you following your plan stick to your conviction that if there's no sell signal, just hold. Right. Uh, next, uh, Joyce Jo asking for SM Prime. Larry Sarampon asking from Doha, Qatar, asking for uh, RCBC, HLP, HPIP. What will be the resistance level this coming March or first quarter? Uh, please remember, uh, who's this Calvin? It's not about it's not about time. It's not about the date. Tip. It's more about how the charts form. That's the difference between technicals. Uh, Van Apol Moji, Vanessa from the Policy City, hello to you. Junjun Catalan, uh, M. White Ali, who's a value, valued commenter, asking for Ali, the N. White uh, Marvin Exia, and stocks more to what he, thank you. Alma Nemis from Macau watching. Chubby Sir, Yung Net, uh, Chubby or Chubby, Robotic. Uh, Jason Relios watching from Taiwan now. I've been in Taiwan by the way this November. Uh, Seth Erin, uh, see you this March 9. Yes, I'm excited too. So, yeah, looking forward to see you. Uh, looking forward to see you there. Hani Natividad, one of the best Instagrammers. Galing niya mag-Instagram stories. Follow her in, uh, in follow her in Instagram. Uh, uh, what stock? SM Prime. SM Prime, boom! Delicado, why? Failed to break out of 40. Broke down from this moving average. Today, it broke down from this. So, SM Prime, no, because of the selling, uh, you have to remember, price and momentum oscillators are dictating that SM Prime is now at a downward motion, that there's a movement downward, that the upward movement because it failed to break out of 40 will continue. So now, its movement, if it fails to bounce tomorrow, I believe SM Prime can go down to around 36.25. It's not that the fundamentals is bad. It's basically because uh, it's not really holding anymore. Uh, it broke, it failed to break the 40 resistance. It failed to hold the 39 uh, moving average, failed to hold also the 38 peso support level as well. So there, uh, watching from Bataan, Bloom sell signal, Christian Epi asking for Metrobank PDO BPI, um, Marvin Xia, second line of stocks, he's gonna trade. 
it's not be, it's not mainly because of second liner stocks. It's mainly triggered by the charts. So my style is it's more on the charts, not on the label of the stock. Shirley Octavo watching from Oman. Calvin Cardoso. Will the recession of Italy affect the Italian mar uh, the Asian market? But you have to remember, every time there's a recession, uh, it somehow adds a uh, level of level of uncertainty, and it somehow gives you also a negative sentiment as well. So you have to check uh, how many OFWs are in Italy that are uh, sending money to the Philippines. If madami ba sa kanila mga wala ng trabaho, if wala sila ng trabaho, it will affect remittances. Then you also can check, uh, do we trade with Italy? I'm talking about export-import. Uh, how much do we trade to Italy? And how will it affect us as well uh, if uh, we fail to... Uh, how do I put this? If Italy starts to go into our... If, as Italy goes into our recession, Lawrence Osina asking for Mac, uh, Army Guita, JFC Picor ISM, Jargon Dagaang asking for MPI Food SC, Romel Ramos from PRMX from uh, Paranaque, El Balanghay ask, from Baguio asking for House, Marco Papa asking for MPI. Daming MPI, yeah, sige, let's do MPI. Uh -huh, MPI. There. Hmm. For those who followed the videos last week, I said that if it fails to hold 4.85, you can expect MPI to go lower, and that's what happened today. No, uh, the breakdown started last Friday, as you can see here. Then yesterday tried to push up, but the 4.85 level reinforced itself already as a resistance. So the large red candle today should not be something that should shock you. Why? Because 4.85 is no longer a support. 4.85 is a resistance. So now there's a possible narrative that. Metro Pacific Investments, MPI could drop to around the 4.6 level. So target is this. Goes to 4.6, bounces from 4.6, buy at 4.6, sell at 4.85 pesos per share. Annalyn, uh, Anal Annalyn Barilka asking for the green. Uh, Palmer Silver and Chubby. Baka Chubby, not Chubby. Chubby yung net. Uh -huh. uh, Palmer Salvador is from Dubai. Calvin, uh, Calvin Cardoso. Uh, Haya Sintrabuya asking for Meg SM Prime and Jollibee who's from Lebanon. Oh, interesting. I've never been to uh, Lebanon. Lebanon. Glendon Maturan from Cebu asking for Alco. Sige. Uh, Michael Mejia, hello to you. Mapua, sobrang talino niyan, guys. Sobrang talino niyan. Um, Marvin Manuel from the E3 asking for JFC, Ali, and AC. Oh, I'll be in the E3 this week as I go to uh, as I go to Surigao. Chef Norse Hero Galem. Hello to you. Oy. Okay. Uh, hmm. Sige, let's do Meralco, Mega White, and Green. Hmm. Green. If you look at this, and I'll zoom in, it's still progressing in its breakout. The breakout came here. After the breakout, it's now starting to consolidate again. So that's a possible range for green. For green, you have a support of 2.40. Then you have a resistance at 2.3. It's just as plain as that. So next, um, mega wide. Mega wide, uh, yeah. it's now at the resistance at 18.75. So here's the thing. Uh, if mega wide does not go up in the next few days, you're not supposed to be shocked. It's just mainly because there's a resistance at the 18.75 level that we need to see that it should actually break that level for it to have a shot, a possibility to go up. If it does not break the 18.75 level, uh, Mega White can go down and be traced back to around uh, 18 pesos per share for 18 pesos per share for the short term. But if it breaks out of 18.75 and you are a position trader, the stock will start to reverse. Narrative Mega White if it stays above 18.75. A reversal is now in effect, but it needs to stay up and break out, break out of the 18.75 level for it to have a chance to push up and go up even further. So there. So yeah, I'm excited. No, uh, I forgot to mention this. Uh, I'll be in Jensen June, but July I'll be in CDO. July I'll also be in Iloilo. August in Hong Kong. Then um, August in Dubai also for Stock Smarts Dubai. Then October. Uh, October, or October, I'll be in Qatar again, Stock Smarts Qatar. Then November, I'll end the, I'll end it with Taiwan. Naman, as for out of uh, town trips or out of Manila trips, we'll go. Now, Mega Wide, uh, Mega World, here. 
Uyo, Mega World is now trying to break out of the 5.4 level. If it does break out of the 5.4 level, it will go to 5.75. Please remember, uh, Mega World from September last year, it started to push up. It started to break out, consolidate a bit in November, December. Then it pushed up at the start of the year, then it started to consolidate. So now, if it breaks out of 5.4, I believe Mega World will go to 5.75. If it does not break out of 5.4, Mega World will also consolidate, similar to other stocks that we've been watching, that it could go to around the 5 peso level once again. So there. Are you guys enjoying? I hope you guys enjoy uh, this format and I hope this is something that encourages you and pushes you to invest uh, a lot you know, because I really believe that it's time for you wherever you are in the world. If you're an overseas Filipino, you're a businessman, you are a student, you're a stay-at-home mom, it doesn't matter. You can trade the markets and you can win. And this is one of the greatest times to be alive because you can use the internet, you can use investments to help your money grow while you're doing what you like, either in your business, in your job, or whatever items you are passionate about as well. So it's now... 11.10 in Manila, I'll be very very early tomorrow for Bloomberg, so um, we'll need the rest. But thank you so much to the more than 200 plus people who are live at the same time joining us. It's always an honor to be part of your journey. Never stop believing, never stop reaching for your dreams. If you fail, it doesn't define who you are. Just bounce back, do what you can, uh, do what you can to just better yourself. Always try to strive to become a better version of yourself because if you become better, uh, it will allow you to rise to the next level and that's what's going to take you and bring you to financial freedom. So that's it for now. Marvin Germo in Manila. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.